Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12 where I'm going to ask the question, what if we replace the Merlin engines on Falcon 9 with the YF-100 engines from the Chinese space program, currently used on the Long March 5, but due to be launched on the Long March 10, which will be their moon rocket presumably. And this seems like an odd question to ask. Uh, the Merlin engines are very good. They have very high thrust to weight ratio. In other words, they have very low mass for the kind of thrust that they provide. 0.467 tons here with 922.7 kilonewtons of thrust. And for a gas generator, kerosene, oxygen engine, uh, 296 at sea level, 317 in vacuum is not too bad. Uh, if we take a look, however, at the uprated version of the YF-100 KG to be used on the Long March 10, uh, well, they're bigger, so fewer of them are going to actually fit on here. In fact, we probably need a skirt. Uh, but being bigger, uh, they are uh, their mass is a little bit uncertain, so I've erred on the side of caution here. However, they're probably lighter than this uh, because they're staged combustion engines, not gas generator engines, and so they have a basically double the chamber pressure of the Merlin engines. Uh, the, the physical size is about this size, but that's partly because they have a higher nozzle ratio, uh, which gives them a little bit more vacuum efficiency even on the sea level ones. And so the, the mass might be a little bit lower than what I have here, just as being conservative. And 1,396 kilonewtons in vacuum is what the sea level ones get. And you can see that the specific impulse is higher than for the Merlin engines. And that's because they are staged combustion engines. They're more complicated. One of the downsides is that they have a worse throttling range. They go down to 65%. They are intended to help the core of the Long March 10 land. And they want to recover the core of the Long March 10. But we'll see about that. <laughs> we'll see about that. Uh, if you can see, the Merlin 1D engines get down to 40%. Now, the Long March 10 core is much uh, heavier, it's larger, it's 5 meters in diameter compared to the 3.6 meter or 3.7 meter diameter of Falcon 9. So uh, this might be a little bit more appropriate for them as far as the thrust that they provide in order to do a landing. Uh, but uh, that makes it hard for the Falcon 9 version, the, the Chinese Falcon 9, if you will, to actually land. So that's, yeah, that's got to be a separate issue. Recoverability is a separate issue. Right now I'm asking about performance. But you can see with the higher specific impulse, that's pretty good. Uh, whether we can fit enough engines, probably we need a skirt on here if we're going to fit enough engines because they're going to get in each other's way, especially for gimbling right now. Uh, so that's a downside. So that's one aspect. Another aspect is the upper stage engine. They have a special variant that's going to be a vacuum engine. And uh, so this, that's the Merlin vacuum that you guys are familiar with. Now we haven't actually seen the vacuum variant, so I don't know how big it's going to be. Uh, so I've made it uh, that big compared to the K version. The K version is the uprated sea level version. And so this is the M version, which is the vacuum version. And for some reason it didn't get the right stats. I will get the right stats for it. Uh, I don't know why it didn't get the right stats. The actual stats are 352.3 seconds in vacuum and this gets well 351 actually uh, so actually it's only one second of ISP better uh, but it does have a lot more thrust uh, the Merlin 1D vacuum gets 1046 and uh, this one and the mass is different okay so something's wrong with this one I'll fix it uh, the actual thrust is supposed to be 1460 so as far as the thrust numbers, oh, I, I see where I've got it wrong. Uh, as far as the thrust numbers are concerned and the ISPs are concerned, we're pretty certain about the YF-100. The mass of the engine and the physical size of the vacuum engine, we're not so cer certain about right now. So yeah, but let me do those fixes. But before I even do those fixes, we have to verify what the mass the actual Falcon 9 can carry, right? I mean, we need to make sure that in Kerbal Space Program with my KOS scripts, which I'll be using the same script for both, both rockets, uh, we get a consistent result for how much it can carry. And so right now it's trying to carry 22.8 tons of av gas. Let's see if, oh, oh, that's too many of those. Let's see if the KOS script can do that properly. And then we'll move on 
to checking out the replacement engines. And you saw the better ISP and the, there's also the difficulty of just putting them on the stage. That's one thing. But there are other problems and we'll get to those. Okay, we can launch from here. That's no problem. We're just testing payload to orbit. Oh, uh, let me fix something. And there's payload to orbit without recovery. Uh, let go of the clamps a little bit too early there. This may be a steeper recovery trajectory. I don't know if I want this trajectory actually. Probably should have taken off the landing legs and the grid fins, huh? Hopefully they're not too heavy. We'll keep them on for the Chinese version, just to be consistent. Okay, the Merlin vacuum is lit. Okay, fairing set. Okay, we are in orbit, uh, 279 by 222, and we've got 114 meters per second left, and this is with a 22.8 ton payload. Let me just verify. Oh, we can't check that, but we could subtract that uh, the previous mass with the current vessel mass and it's 22.8. Now, if the real thing can carry more to orbit, that's fine. What we're concerned about here is a comparison given the situation, which is being in Kerbal Space Program using this launch script. That's it. So, uh, and having everything else be consistent. So, uh, if the real thing gets better, that's other tweaking that might be necessary with the launch script, for instance but I'm not going to deal with that right now. We want to compare the use of the engines. So going back to the VAB, let me make sure that the fixes for the vacuum engine are in. All right, so now for the Chinese version uh, with the YF100s. So I've fixed the vacuum version. We have 352 seconds of ISP, 1,460 kilonewtons. Its a mass is 2.2 tons. Uh, and that's just an estimate, but that's the vacuum version. Of course, for all the tanks on Falcon 9, we have to rebalance the kerosene oxygen for these engines. So that change has to be made, but I haven't resized the tanks. And therein lies the main problem. But before I get to that, there's a quirk. Uh, well, when I tweak them, it goes better. So maybe that's okay. All right. But it's not okay because they're all tightly packed and there's no way they could gimbal. They could probably use differential thrust to control, but still... It needs a skirt, so there are issues with putting these YF-100s under here. One other possibility is just to not to have such a long nozzle. It'll be more sea level optimized, we could cut it off, and that's probably the best solution. But I don't want to do that because that hinders the use of the engine for its intended rocket, the Long March 10. So I'm going to leave it Long March 10 size, but I'm going to ask you to pretend that it is cut off here and in in that case, it would get better sea level ISP and less uh, vacuum ISP, but not probably by much, not really hurt by much. So on balance, it'll probably end up being a wash as far as the efficiency is concerned on the first stage. But yeah, that's an issue, but I want seven of them to get a decent thrust to weight ratio. But you can see how quickly it uses that, two minutes and 17 seconds. And the, st the whole rocket does not get as much delta v as the falcon 9 does with the same payload we haven't changed the payload it's 22.8 tons but the rocket used to get whoops we don't want two of those uh the rocket used to get more than 9300 not 9146 and one reason for that is we have heavier engines and maybe they're not as heavy as i've got them here but they would be heavier because they have a lot more thrust but another problem is that our vacuum stage here is not being properly utilized. It starts off with a very high thrust weight ratio, it's already one. It doesn't need to be a thrust weight ratio of one. Uh, but it's only a four minute stage. It gets to a reasonably high thrust weight ratio like that, considering that this is the maximum payload. We could certainly put more fuel on this stage, basically. 
and so we're leaving some delta v behind by not having more fuel on that stage. But I wanted to see what would happen if we swap out the engines directly and let's see if the engines can make up the fact that it doesn't seem to have as much delta v by the high thrust to weight ratio. So that is the counterbalancing thing. Otherwise we have to make a different rocket with different uh, fuel balance and all that stuff. So we'll try it like this with seven of the YF100s at the bottom, one on the second stage, and see if it can do 22.8 or maybe it can do more. Maybe this the thrust weight ratio thing, it will, oh, now, hmm, okay. Things have changed suddenly. Uh, <laughs> suddenly, okay, wait a minute. Uh, I put that, hmm, okay, now, now it's saying, why is it saying 9,377 suddenly? It was, when it was on this stage, no, now it's still saying 9,377. Okay, maybe as more. Uh, we will see. I'm suspicious now. Let's just run the script and find out. So I'm going to edit it. Now, one thing we need to do is make sure that the thrust weight ratio is properly entered in it so that the script knows that it can use, it can turn faster and all that business. But otherwise, I'm not going to change anything. So 1.11 and the end thrust to weight ratio here is 5.14. Other than that, I could try to change the steepness, but I won't to make sure that that's consistent. And we'll find out if it can carry extra by how much delta V we have left. Okay, off we go. The plumes need some work. I'll figure that out. I haven't looked at these Long March engine plumes in a while. Okay, we had some intermittent throttling down through Max Q, but we are now through Max Q. Okay, it's throttling down here. Uh, the Regular Falcon 9 with the Merlins also did. Okay, staging. And... Ignition. Oh yeah, that plume needs to be changed. These plumes were made before, like, changes to real plumes, I think. Alright, fairing separation. Uh, that was just set to a particular height. All right, so we end up in orbit and roughly the same orbit with 324, so about 200 meters per second more. So it works out to be a little bit better, apparently. Let's see what we can do with that, though. I'm going to assume that the delta V reading here is going to be consistent as I increase the amount that we have in here. So we're going to say that we're OK down to 9,196. Okay, so like that much, and that means 24.7 tons, or about 2 tons extra. So not too much there, but what if we try to... Well, there's no easy way to put extra fuel on here, is it? The fairings are attached to this bit. I think we're going to cover up the bottom of it with extra fuel. Okay, that can still go on its node. Do we have enough clearance? We have some clearance in there, okay. So we can probably fit some fuel here. Right now there's one minute of extra fuel. It was four minutes and nine seconds, now it's five minutes and nine seconds. Still 0 0.92 thrust weight ratio, but I think if we put this on. I mean, we can get a little bit more on, but let's try it with just that one extra minute of fuel. So now 9,374. We can probably go to to that, say. And now we're at 26.4 tons. 26.6 tons. So that's about 4 extra tons. Let's see if that works. So a little bit of an extension to the second stage as if it wasn't long enough already and this thing wasn't tall enough. But we're, we're actually sort of taking up space in the inner stage. 
because I think the nozzle of this is not quite as big as the vacuum nozzle of the Merlin. And since this is a staged combustion engine, that's not entirely a surprise. Let's see. Well, suddenly it's put me on pad 39B, which is fine. Off it goes. Seven of these engines, which means that it does have more thrust than the Merlins, but it should be able to fit more thrust than the Merlins anyway, because these are staged combustion engines that have double the chamber pressure. And if you increase t chamber pressure, you can decrease the size of the engine. The physical diameter of it, especially of the throat. Alright, looking good. All right, staging. All right, and actually the dry mass of the extension tank should probably be, uh, is actually heavier than the normal Falcon 9 upper stage. Uh, the Falcon 9 upper stage is very, very efficient. Fairing set. Well, still looking good so far for this load. And we're making orbit here. That uh, doesn't have the same margin as the Falcon 9 mission, so uh, if we're to be fair, and it got a little bit lopsided there, uh, to be fair, it would carry a little bit less than this. So, uh, right now, I wouldn't say it's fully optimized, but we're talking about between 3 and 4 tons extra, given an extension to the upper stage. Now, there are ways to improve upon it. We could probably make better use of the first stage and all. It'd be better if it was a wider rocket instead of so tall, probably. Uh, but for now, I'll leave it here. It's an interesting thing, the YF-100s from... From, Chinese, uh, from the Chinese space program uh, with their stage combustion kerosene oxygen mix. Of course, we see the stage combustion kerosene oxygen mix with the RD-180 on the Atlas V, but the US hasn't actually flown uh, one that was developed in the United States before. Now, of course, SpaceX has the Raptor engine, which is stage combustion and Mephalox, and same with the B-4 with Blue Origin, but the United States has never developed a stage combustion Kerolox engine, kerosene oxygen engine. Uh, we have used one from the so former Soviet Union, the RD-180, but yeah. Well, China has that. And actually the YF-100 is a development on another Soviet engine, the RD-120, but it's very different now. <laughs> it's uh, like double the thrust and stuff like that. Well, I was just curious about how it would work out. Uh, and of course, as long as we kept the tanks the same, it doesn't really help that much. But two tons is not nothing. But it certainly helps if we can change the rocket. That's a different story. And so they're going to be using these engines on the Long March 10. They've already been using it on the Long March 5. Though not this particular vacuum variant or anything like that. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.